kicking off a brand new series today called Passionate. Passionate. Is anybody in here passionate about something? Okay, so maybe you have a hobby. Maybe you're a, I, I, listen, listen. There's some people in here, I gotta tell you a secret. There's some people in here who are passionate about being Jet fans. I can't understand it. There are people in here who are passionate about being Giants fans. There are people who are passionate about being Cowboys fans. I don't even want to mention the Steelers in here. See, they're the most radical. There's some people in here who are passionate about family. All right? Passionate. We're talking about this today. We're talking about it for the entire month. Passionate. Passionate. Let's gear up. Let's rev up. What does it look like to be passionate about something? Today, we're going to look at a passage of Scripture in the Old Testament. It's 1 Samuel 14 in verse 4. And I'm going to read it, and then we're going to tell the story, right? It says this. On each side of the pass that Jonathan intended to cross to reach the Philistine outpost was a cliff. So there's a cliff on both sides. One was called Bozes, which means a bog or mud, a muddy cliff. And the other is Sene, which is the acacia rock thorn. So on one side, it's muddy. One side, it's thorny. Okay? One cliff cliff stood to the north, and one cliff stood to the south. Jonathan said to his young armor bearer, and an armor bearer was kind of like exactly what it says. Someone who carried your armor for you, carried your shield for you. In fact, the armor bearer, when it would come to battle times, he would run out in front and put the shield down and, and protect you. Okay, his armor bearer uh, was with him, and he said to him, come, let's go. Say, let's go. Let's go go over to the outpost of those, awkward word, men. (laughs) Perhaps the Lord will act on our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by men or men or many or by few. So he says, listen, God can, God can. Whether we're going against many men or a few men, God can, all right? So let's just break this down. Jonathan and his armor bearer, they're about to pick a fight. They're about to go get into battle. And they're in this valley, they're in this area between two cliffs. Either they climb the muddy cliff or they climb the thorny cliff. And I think in our lives, many of us are trying to make moves. We're trying to move life forward. We're trying to make relationships forward. And we find ourselves at a cliff. Some of the cliffs in our lives are muddy cliffs. Some of the cliffs in our lives are thorny cliffs. Whatever your cliff is, whatever the barrier is that is standing between where you are and where you want to be, is a cliff, okay? It's, just, it's a barrier. So in someone's life, 30 pounds of extra body weight stands between where you are and where you want to be health-wise. Are you following me? Yeah. Right? This, we can apply this to any part of our lives. For someone, a certain amount of money is the cliff. It's the barrier between where you are and where you want to be debt-free. Right? There's a, there's, a, there's a certain amount of money that you would need to do that. Whatever applies to your life, whatever your barrier is, and I'm just going to tell you, your spouse being a better person, that's not your barrier. Okay, well, if they would just change everything about themselves, just remember you picked them. You, you picked them. All right, okay. The muddy slide, the muddy side, the muddy slide, the muddy side of life, it's hard to get traction. It's hard to get going, right? You want to get into the gym. You want to exercise. You want to diet. Stop looking at the fly, Kara. (laughs) You want to listen to my message right now, but there's this fly flying around. Now, where was I? 
It was a brilliant point. The muddy side of life, right? It's hard to get traction. It's hard to get moving. You want to get to the gym, but you can't like, get yourself excited about going to the gym. You, you want to try a new diet, but you can't get excited about bean sprouts and kale, right? There's nothing to grab onto. And every time you start trying to make moves in your life, you feel like you take 10 steps forward and you backslide, right? You're sliding back into your old ways, into your old habits, 10 steps forward, 10 steps back. But then there's another cliff. So, okay, I'm, I'm not going to do the muddy slide. I'm going to go the other cliff, and that's the thorny cliff. And the thorny cliff, yeah, you can get some traction, but every step's going to hurt, Every time you grab onto something for support, it's going to hurt. It's going to put a hole in your hand. It's going to put a hole in your foot, right? So there's this muddy slide that is going to be extremely exhausting. And there's this thorny side that's going to be extremely painful. And his armor bearer says, let's go! He don't even know what he's signing up for. He doesn't even know what he said let's go to. He said, either way, whether it's exhausting or painful, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> He's like the ride or die friend, right? I don't know if you have that kind of friend, but all of us have the one idiot friend <laughs> who his mom says to him, if everybody was jumping off the Brooklyn Bridge, would you do it? Yeah. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Let's go. Where are we going? I don't know. <laughs> mm. Let's go. Let's get this done. And I'd be like, but do we have to? Is there not another route we can take? Can't we follow the yellow brick road? Like, if we just keep going straight, will this loop around both cliffs and get us there? Do we have to climb the muddy slide and the thorny hill? Do we have to? And I think in our lives, that's the valley that we find ourselves in, the valley of indecision. The valley of do I have to? And I, and I blame it all on Toys R Us. I'm going off notes right now. This is completely my mind and where my mind goes, and I apologize for what I'm about to say. But I blame it on Toys R Us. Their theme song, I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. There's a million toys at Toys R Us that I, whatever, you know the song. <laughs> I don't want to grow up. I don't want to make a decision. I don't want to make a choice. I don't want to choose between paper and plastic. Just pick one for me. Right? I, and I blame, like, in our lives, we're here. I want to make a change. I want to make a move. I want to have a better life. But will someone just tell me what I'm supposed to do? Will someone just pick for me? And I do feel a little bad for this armor bearer. The armor bearer has no name. He's just an armor bearer. He's taking... The biggest chances and the biggest risks, he's the one out in front putting the armor down and he's got no name. The story doesn't even like make it worthy of saying his name's Jeff. It's just no name. We don't know him. But he's following Jonathan, who's a leader. Jonathan is the son of King Saul. And the armor bearer is following his orders. So it really didn't matter what the decision was because he was going to have to do it anyway. So he just says, let's go. Let's go. Muddy cliff or rock thorn, let's go. And the next verse is so crazy. He says, let's go. And then Jonathan says back, perhaps the Lord will be with us. Perhaps. 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 At which I say, wait a second. 
you don't have a word from God about this. Wait a second. God did not appear to you in a dream and an audible voice from heaven? Like, wait a second. We're about to go pick a fight and perhaps it's God's will. Perhaps. Perhaps this is your idea and perhaps this is God's idea. And I think that's another reason why we get stuck in a valley of indecision. Perhaps God will be with us. Perhaps. Now you think about that one for a second. Because we all want guarantees of God's will. Is it God's will? But is it God's will? All right, so someone in here right now, you're dating somebody. You're thinking about marriage. But you're stuck in the valley because you ain't sure. Is it the perfect person? No! No, it's not. Because there's no perfect person. And if they were the perfect person, you'd mess them up. <laughs> Welcome to Family Church. I love you, just the way you are. Right? We got this idea. Is it the perfect person? No! but we're stuck in indecision because I don't know if it's God's will. Is this God's perfect person for me? Can I just tell you how relationships work? Can I just throw that out there to you guys real quick? Can I tell you? God says this, so who you wanna marry? Someone who's pretty. Someone who loves Jesus. Someone who makes a lot of money. Whatever, whatever your criteria is. And you say, I do, and you say, I do. And then God says, I bless your union. I bless your union. I bless your contract. I bless your decision. I bless your decision. But we want to put it back on God. Well, God, what do you want? What do you want? But what do you want? But what do you want? But what do you want? What do you want? Do you remember the instructions that he gave Adam and Eve? He put the earth in motion. He said, Adam, Eve, go at it. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, have fun. But the next thing we wanna, we want, we want to like, we want to like ask God every single, should I buy whole milk or 2%? Lord, lead me. <laughs> lead me, Jesus. Okay. I know, I know I'm poking fun, I'm just saying. He's even saying here, perhaps God will be with us. Perhaps he will. Perhaps we're about to get punched in the face. Perhaps we're about to lose this fight, right? Perhaps. And so he's like, wait, you got no guarantee for me? Nope. You got no guarantee? Nope. I got no guarantee. Nope. I thought we were gonna have church first service today but perhaps there was gonna have snow. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Perhaps. Perhaps he will, perhaps he won't. Even bigger, perhaps God told me this or perhaps this is all my idea. I think God's leading us to go fight these people, but perhaps I'm just in an ornery mood and I really wanna have a fight. Come on. We gotta, under, we, gotta really, we gotta look at this stuff, man. Perhaps it's gonna work out, perhaps it won't. And I think that's where we get all mad at God. We get all mad at God in our lives. You get sick for whatever reason you got sick. God, I prayed and it didn't work. Perhaps it will, perhaps it won't. I can't even tell you why some prayers don't work. I can't tell you. One day we'll know. One day we'll have the answers. But I love what happens. I love the next, the next sentence. Because we gotta be honest, guys. Perhaps it will, perhaps it won't. Perhaps you'll live to be 120 years old. Perhaps you won't. Come on. He said, but let's go. Perhaps, no perhaps, let's go. I'm in it, I'm with you. Because there's one thing I know, and it's the next sentence. Nothing can hinder our Lord. 
Nothing can hinder our Lord. So perhaps it is God. Nothing can hinder our Lord. Nothing can hinder our Lord. Nothing can hinder our Lord. Now I know this story got you all jacked up. Yeah, but was it God's will? Perhaps it was. Perhaps it wasn't. That's not the point. The point was, he said, let's go. And God can and nothing can hinder our God. God can and nothing can hinder our God. But before we get to the fight, we got to overcome the fear of the muddy cliff or the thorny mountain. Right? I want to say this to you. Listen, the only thing, the only thing that can overcome the fear of the muddy cliff or the thorny mountain is a vision beyond the barrier. A vision beyond the barrier. You didn't get that. You didn't get that. You didn't get that. So you have a certain amount of debt that stands between you and being debt free. What does it look like to be debt free? What does that look like? What does it look like to be in the land that's more than enough? What does it look like that all your bills are paid off and you could go to the store and buy whatever you want without first having to check your checkbook? What does that look like? So for Jonathan and his armor bearer, they had to see victory. Whether by few or by many, I see victory. Whatever's on the other side, I see victory. I see a win in my life. So it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Perhaps God will, perhaps God won't. It didn't matter. I see victory. I see us winning. And I believe that this is a quorum deo moment. If you don't know what that word is, it means before the eyes of God and in the presence of God. They had this in the presence of God moment that we believe that perhaps this is your will. And so by faith, we're going after the vision that we have. One of the things I know about leadership is that leaders look a lot smarter than they actually are. Huh? They do. They look a lot smarter than they actually are. Perhaps this is a really brilliant idea that I have, and I'm going to get everybody on board to believe it. And as long as I get everybody on board to believe it, we can achieve it. But perhaps it was just some bad pizza I had last night and I have no idea what I'm doing. Come on. This is what this guy's saying. He's like, I believe that I have a vision from God. And we know that nothing can hinder our Lord. Today I want to say to you, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Two weeks ago I said, beep, beep. The lights turned green. Let's get moving. Today it's let's go. We're talking about being passionate. We're talking about revving our lives up again, right? And today I'd like to bring some clarity to where we're going this year, all right? And just like in our lives where we have cliffs on both sides, we as a church have some barriers that block us from reaching the vision that we have, okay? And so today is not about the barriers. I've heard pastors preach thousands of sermons about barriers. We all know that we have a barrier of sin. We don't need to talk about that. I don't know why churches want to keep talking about the same exact problem that we all have. We all got barriers. What's the solution? What does it look like on the other side? What does it look like to be free from that thing that you've been struggling with? All right, that's, that's what I want to know. Give me some clarity. Give me a vision of what my life could look like without this addiction. Because then I have a goal to reach. Come on. All right? So today's series, it's called Passion. Today's title is Let's Go. Let's go. In spite of the barriers... Let's go after what God is calling us to do, all right? So number one, our number one goal, the vision that we have is this, ready? God has called us to reach his lost children. 
God has called us to reach his lost children. I was in a situation yesterday where something happened with one of my kids and I had to go into dad mode. I had to go into confrontation mode. I had to go confront somebody about how they treated my child. It wasn't pretty. Well, it wasn't pretty inside of me. I didn't come out my face. I just, this is all transparency and honesty, a very vulnerable moment. It was hard for me because I know I could have came out my face. But then I was like, yo, somebody's got world star video going already. <laughs> Preacher. Preacher lose his mind at a cheerleading competition. <laughs> Next week, I'm wearing a cheer dad shirt. I don't care. I'm going to show you cheer dad all day, all right? Just so you know. <laughs> if me as a dad would go after a situation because something happened to my child unjustly, how much more is the heavenly father coming after his creation that has not yet heard the truth of his goodness? How hard, how hard is the father running to the end of the road after the prodigal son? How many times is he leaving the 99 and going after the one? All right? It is a commission of God for a church to go after God's lost children. All right? So today I ask you, what's your reach? Who could you be reaching right now? Me as your pastor, I offer limited resources to reach people, but I can reach people through you. Watch this. Studies show that 82% of unchurched people would attend a church service if invited. 82% of people would say, yeah, I'll go to church with you on a Sunday. They would say yes, if invited. But the reality is, ready, only 2% of Christians will ever invite someone to church. Wow, okay. Watch this. 70% of unchurched people have never been invited to church. 70% of people when polled that have never gone to church, they say, no, no one's ever asked me. No one's ever invited me. 82% of them would say, I'd go if someone did invite me, all right? So if you have a church of 100 people and everyone invited one person, 80 guests would show up the next week. So a person who has a church of 100 people just doubled their church in one week with everybody inviting one person to church. It's not that hard, but that's a harsh reality that in a church of 100 people, only two people are going to invite somebody to church. Woo! And that's why Christianity isn't growing. Because it's not a product that we think is worth giving out. It's not something that we own. It's not who we are. It's what we do. Come on, you got you to realize this one. Because if it was who we are, it would be something that we constantly talk about. It'd be, con it'd be something that we constantly express to people who are around us, okay? In most churches, there's no culture of invite. When someone says, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, nothing, just chilling. You could say, well, I'm going to go to church on Sunday. Yeah. You ever been to a really cool church with a really handsome pastor? <laughs> Come check out my church. <laughs> hey, just saying, it works, all right? All right. But Pastor Mike, how do we reach, right? So I want to give you a vision for what's on the other side of the barrier. I want to, I have very close, all right, can I get real with you for a second then? This, this will be a little convicting. This will be a little convicting. I'm going to be honest. Some of you got some really close friends and family that you love them. You hang out all the time. Can you imagine all of eternity without them? Okay, so we got to do something about that. Okay, we need to do something about that. Let's throw that out there. When I was in high school, I could not imagine living my life without those friends. Like, I'm, I'm talking about just out of, out of high school. Like, we're all going to college. What are we going to do? Now, I couldn't imagine eternity. All right? So, Pastor Mike, are you telling us that we all have to become evangelists? No! No! That would be easier if we all did become evangelists. But this year, 
2020, listen to me. I'm about to get real. This is real. We as a church, and we hope you jump on board, we're going to take social media marketing more serious. Social media marketing, not to market a business called Family Church, but to market Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's what the Bible tells us. The Bible says, preach Jesus and him crucified. Okay? But how do we do that? Social media, listen, this is all practical now. Social media is the biggest shift in communication in the last 500 years. There's never been such a big shift since the printing press. Come on! The printing press. And we all got digital printers in our house today. Social media is the biggest shift in communication since the printing press. And so here's what we want to do. Here's what we want to do. Instead of doing what most churches do and what we've done to date, only posting about church services, make sure you come to church, 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 or event, 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 or wake up, we're going to be meeting today. Instead of it being about events and about church services, it's going to be about you. It's going to be about you. Because we are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. We want to put pictures and stories that show that. Not graphics, but your face. A group of people from all sorts of cultural backgrounds hugging each other in the foyer way. Who are these people? What's their story? Why did they come to family church? Pictures of water baptism, videos of water baptism, videos and, and pictures of people raising their hands saying, I've decided to follow Jesus Christ. What's that story? What's that look like? Why would this person put their faith in Jesus Christ? Here's what we ask of you. Ready? Like them, comment, and share. Like, comment, share. Listen, I've looked at our Instagram over the last year and a half. If we post a picture of an event, no likes. Like zero. It's just something that we just keep scrolling. We scroll right by it, right? The whole point behind social media is to get people to stop the scroll. If you're trying to post something, whatever, this is about to help somebody out. If you want a bunch of likes, it's got to be an image or something that's going to stop somebody from scrolling and give attention to what you just put a picture of. So first we got to get people to stop the scroll. People scrolling right by events. But when we put a picture of your kids doing something amazing on stage or in the classes, hundreds of likes, right? When people like, comment, and share Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, it puts you in higher rankings in something called an algorithm. There's an algorithm that's run on the likes, the comments, and the shares. Now listen, you don't have to write some religious comment. You could just comment with a thumbs up. But a comment is a comment, and it pushes it higher in the algorithm, which gives it more exposure, which reaches more lost people. Are we getting this? Guess what you just did? You evangelized. You evangelized. You became an evangelist by liking, commenting, and sharing. You evangelized. This is what the, the apostle said, that, that Jesus is not coming back until the gospel is preached into the corners of the earth. How's it going to get there? Likes, comments, and shares. I wish, I wish you could see my heartbeat today. It's not about growing a church. That's not my job. Jesus said to Peter, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. It's not my job to build a church. It's my job to grow and expand the kingdom. We're talking about people's lives being saved with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? You just evangelize. And I say this to you, let's go. Let's go. We can do that. We can do that. We can like, comment, share. Let's go. Number two, 
We are going to take church online more serious. Hi, those watching online right now. Snowbirds all over the, the country. We're gonna take church online more serious. Now listen, I gotta be honest, I love an audience. I love people in the room. I get more amped up, like when you laugh, or you say amen, or you clap, or I say, let's go! And you're like, let's go! Like it amps me up, and then I get going, you know what I'm saying? I love that. I do. But I was home a few weeks ago with strep throat. I couldn't attend the service, so I watched online. And it was good, like our picture quality is good and our audio quality is good, but I felt like an afterthought watching online. And maybe you're watching today and you're feeling the same way, so I'm gonna talk to you right now because I care about you. (laughs) Ding! I felt like an afterthought. I felt like a fly on the wall. Like I was eavesdropping on your conversation in this room. And, and when the big greet was going on, I'm like, what's going on? Like I, I was like looking, like, what's going on during the big greet? Because the camera's showing the screen. I'm like, yeah, but what are people doing in the room? And I felt like during offering, we're talking what's happening in here. And I'm like, what's going on with offering? Like, talk to me. Just, I'm just saying. I, don't, I haven't seen anybody do this before, but it's something that's burning in me. I want to develop an online host team, all right, where during the five-minute countdown, we're not watching a five-minute countdown online. We're watching a pre-service talk show. Oh, come on. Come on. This is so cool. A pre-service talk show where it's like, hey, welcome to Family Church. I'm Mike, and this is Cindy. Welcome. And we're having such a great time this morning. Pastor Mike's going to be preaching a message about whatever. Maybe they leave the studio, and they go down with a wireless camera, and they're in the foyer way interviewing people. Like, oh, what would you think about last week's message? Blah, blah, blah. Now there's all this happening online for an online community that we're taking serious. During offering, we leave this room and we go back to the studio where someone's talking to the online audience about offering. What does this look like to an online experience, okay? And then during the big greet, back to them. After service, a post-show recap. You know, like I started getting crazy thinking about this. I was like, yo, they've got the video. We could even do like rewind and fast work. You know, when Pastor Mike did that thing on stage, like, ah. <laughs> Look at that. Zoop, 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 zoop. <laughs> Pastor Mike, why would you waste your time when the Bible says that people need to be in the room? Because 15,208 viewers tuned into our services in January. Wait, wait. 15,208 viewers tuned into our services in January. Yo, that's a whole size church. How many minutes did they watch? 15,000 people watched 27,240 minutes of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can't ignore that. We, We can't ignore that and say, yeah, but they need to be in church. They are in church. So let's pastor them. That's 15,000 people who need a pastor. Let's go! Let's go! I'll pastor somebody who can't leave a hospital bed. I'll I'll pastor a bunch of people in Orange County Jail who are watching us online. I'll pastor college kids who can't get into a spirit-filled church, but will get their friends into a dorm room and watch us on a laptop. I'll pastor them. Let's go! Right? I'm just saying, maybe, maybe when I started talking about, I'm sweating right now. 
Maybe when I started talking about that host team and you being part of that online engagement, that was up your alley. We don't have anybody signed up for that. So if you would see Adriana right there in the white t-shirt. I'm not, I'm not just throwing out general ideas like I want to get the host team up and running and having that whole online thing by the end of March. Like, let's go. Let's go. I don't care if it's thorny or muddy. Let's go. All right? Okay, number three. Number three. We're almost done. I'm over time. In order to build relationships, we need more social space. We need more social space. Okay? Now, this is not social online. This is in this building. We need more room in the building for social space. So this year, with your permission, I would like to begin the process of expanding the foyer, the lobby, just outside those doors. I wanna expand it by 4,000 square feet, right? That'd be 40 feet out into the parking lot by 100 feet wide. It would go past both bathrooms and out into that, essentially that whole circle that nobody actually follows the law anyway. (laughs) We'd get rid of that ridiculousness. Right? I hate that circle. I'm just saying, I'm sorry. I always cut around it anyway. And I have to like, sorry, Jesus. <laughs> want to get rid of that circle. We'll, we'll keep the rock, move the rock. We'll transplant the trees. We want to move the four-year way out 40 feet by 100 feet. And then we want to put a drive under carport for rainy days and snowy days. Your family could come under, drop you all, men, men. We could drop our families off underneath the shelter of the Almighty (laughs) and then go park the car and walk in the rain. No. But here's, here's the idea. On this side, we'd move the cafe from its own building down there. We'd bring the cafe out into the lobby. We'd move media sales from just these tables to a room on this side. We'd have a large seating and gathering area in the lobby that have TVs and people could choose to watch there. But it would allow us space to do social things. This year, for Super Bowl Sunday, I wanted to do a tailgate party. But I was like, how are we gonna pull that off? It might be cold, it might not be cold. Like, I wanna do electric grills and be grilling burgers and and hot dogs. We could do that in the lobby if we expand it. We could have like an indoor tailgate party before Super Bowl Sunday. There's couples in here who your heart's desire is to make friends with other couples. Where do we do that? What's the space for that? Where's the time for that? If we had more space in the lobby between picking up our kids and walking out, there could be hangout moments. We could create, okay, if you're uh, tw- uh, 19 to 25 uh, young adults are uh, married or whatever, we're gonna meet in the lobby right between services and, and exchange numbers, whatever. Right now, there's just, it's just not a lot of space. We're in and out because there's not a lot of room to move around in the lobby. But there is obviously a barrier in doing something like that. I don't know if it's a muddy slide or a thorny slide, but either way, it's gonna be painful and exhausting. Um, And it's obviously money. Um, Like we're gonna have to do a fundraiser to do it. I don't wanna take out another mortgage. We paid this building off. We don't owe anything on this facility. Amen? We're debt free. I'd like to stay that way. But we can do it in bite sized chunks if we plan this out. We can do it one hinge at a time, one sheet of sheetrock at a time, one window at a time, one tile on the floor at a time, right? So I have them right now, the builders, we've already met with the builders, they're writing it all out. What's the cut sheet? What is every stud, every tile, every hinge? What is everything that's gonna have to be going into that? And you as a family could pray and say, Lord, how much could we put into this? And maybe you buy all the hinges for all the doors. Maybe you buy all the tiles for the floor. Well, whatever it is, you, Lord, what is my part to play? And watch what 
the armor bearer says to Jonathan, 1 Samuel 14, 7, put this up on the screen. He says, do all that you have in mind, his armor bearer said. He says, go ahead. I am with you, heart and soul. Heart and soul. And, and listen, I'm not asking for your checkbook today. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about the vision that's on the other side. I am asking you for your heart and your soul. I am saying, can you feel this in your heart? And does it make sense in your mind? Right? Because it's got to be both. It's got to be both heart and soul. Or else we're not going to sell this to the next generation. We're not going to sell church to the next generation. Here's what I know. We start reaching the lost online. We start hosting online church like it's a real church. We create more social gathering space. God will grow his church. God will grow his church. I know what he promises. This is what Jesus promises. He says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen? We need to be connected heart and soul to reach those who are far from God. Amen? So I say to you, let's go. Let's go. This, listen, and this is just, this is a tiny piece. This is a tiny piece of the vision we see beyond the mountain. This is a tiny piece. This is a bite size for today. This is a big bite, but it's a bite size. How can you play your part to advance the kingdom of God? And here's what I know. Here's what I know. When we were building this church, I had bought a little tiny house. It was my first house. This little tiny house that was just a, it was beat, man. It was bad. And I was sitting in there by myself one night, uh, painting a wall. And uh, it was so, I like, I had the wood-burning stove on. And I was sitting by the wood-burning stove, and I was complaining to God. And I was like, this stinks. I was like, this house is tiny. I was a complaint. This house is tiny. I got no money to build it. I, I'm complaining. I'm tired. I'm working all day, and I'm fixing this house all night. Nobody appreciates me. <laughs> and here's what the Lord promised me. And I know I'm speaking to somebody's heart today. And I'm just this is no manipulation. This is what the Lord said to me. He said, "If you would build my house, I would build yours." Look it up. It's in the Bible. He said, if you would build my house, I would build yours. And we were in the middle of this building project. The next day, I, 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 we were still downtown Middletown. I came over here, and I began working in this building. I began pulling Cat 5 cables, and because and, uh, Cat 6 wasn't out, Cat 5 cables, and data lines, and phone lines, and blah, blah, blah. And, and next thing I knew, blessing after blessing, opportunity after opportunity just fell in my lap. It paid for all the renovations I had to do on my house. It, it, it set us up for where we are today as a family. I'm just saying today, connect with God. Lord, I'm with you heart and soul. Show me what you have for my life. Show me what you called to. Show me the part to play in the kingdom of God. How am I to advance the mission of God in the earth today. Maybe today's message spoke to you that God doesn't have your heart and soul. Maybe you find yourself far from God today. You're so far from God that you're in a valley and God's outside the valley and you know there's a God outside the cliff but you've never met him. We're asking, could you get a vision of God today? Maybe you need a life change Maybe you need a vision for your life beyond a muddy cliff or a thorny cliff. You need a God-sized vision. And today on this snow day Sunday, we'd like to pray with you the prayer of salvation to accept Jesus Christ into your life. And here at Family Church, we prayed all together. It goes like this. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me 
In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Before I close out, I'd like to take two seconds. And if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you give me the honor of celebrating you publicly for two seconds? If anybody here prayed that for the first time, would you just wave at me real quick? I'm not going to call you up. Yeah, man, I see you. Yeah, I see you. Yeah, let's go. Anybody else real quick? All right. Yeah, I see you, man. Let's go. Woo. Yeah, I see you. All right. Snow Day Sunday. Let's go.